to pull his head and salt, whatever, whatever he was. Oh, really? No way. What's it got? guys so um, we've came back into Oxford we went to our first location and there's a fishing match on so we've respected them guys I'm going about dinner time so we will go down to our original location but before we come to this bridge I ain't got a clue where we are we've got a bit of a river here I think we've got another bridge further down and then we're gonna have a look for somewhere else as well and then about dinner time we're gonna go back down to where we wanted to go so we had a little bit of a toy car don't think that's going to be able to be saved, but we'll take it back nevertheless. And I've also had a small key, um, which I'll show you later, guys. A scooter. add in a bit because I have put it in the box out of the way and um, I'll get it out in a sec. But yeah, I've found one now as well, look. Little keys. Beautiful. That was a key that Glenn found. Uh, yeah, I've just come to show you. <laughs> I keep getting them um, part ones. Yeah, it's an old medieval shoe iron. Lovely. It's looking good. You may have seen us discover a few of these on our previous videos, but this is the first complete one for Kirsty. Another remarkable piece of history saved. A 1750s shoe pattern, also known as a shoe iron. Found some old uh, tin snips. Probably 40s, 50s, not mega old, but yeah, uh, seem in decent condition. Big bolt. Pair of glasses, but I've lost my arm. Spanner and a knife. I haven't got the spoon yet, guys, but that will come today at some point. Guaranteed. I've had a scooter, which I threw onto Mike's magnet. <laughs> I've actually been down in the river having a wade. But a really old little knife without the handle. That one's uh, early 1900s by the looks of it. And I've had some sort of clock. There we go. Seen better days, mine, but. I'd say that's about 1950s, 1960s style. 
Got something here for Glenn to clean up and have a look at. I'm not sure what it is. And I've got a pocket full of water. Oh, it's not a clock though. It's a, a telephone, telephone dial. Thing? Ah, it is? Yeah. Oh, I just realised it's not a clock, it's a telephone dial. There we go. <laughs> See now, Steve, you know when you was a little boy, he used to have the. That was after. <laughs> <laughs> Salt, whatever, salt, whatever it was. Oh, really? No way. What's it got? Sorry. No. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Oh, get a look at my green man. Oh, he's really good. Amazing sis, well done. Well done sis, that's Please for you. This is a beautiful enamel sign that dates back to the period when the Morning Post was in circulation, which was from 1772 to 1937. But these enamel signs didn't start to be made till the 1880s and onwards. So based on this information, this suggests that this sign dates between 1880 and 1937. And after lots of research, it appears that this sign could possibly be a one-off, a mega rare find indeed. In 1772, in the bustling streets of London, a publisher named John Bell founded the Morning Post and this daily newspaper quickly became a staple for Londoners, offering a mix of news, opinions and advertisements. In 1788, Peter and Daniel Stewart took over, and its circulation soared. But by 1924, the paper was purchased by Lord Rothermere, who also owned the Daily Mail. And after more than 160 years of independent publishing, the Morning Post became the Daily Telegraph, marking the end of an era. Although the Morning Post is no longer with us, it played a key role in British journalism, and this rare enamel sign is a tangible piece of that legacy. I'm going to show you. Oh, check the grunt, there's a coin. Yeah. Coin, the grunt, right? Yeah. yeah. So I just found this piece of scrap metal here. I thought it was a sign when it first came up, but it wasn't. And uh, in the crud, I don't know if you can see it there, 
is an old coin. So it's probably an old penny or something. I'll get that out in a minute. Hidden in the crud was a Queen Elizabeth II one penny coin, dated 1962. So it's time to dig now. Well, there, there we go. That's the bottom end of a, a 50 car, by the looks of it. You can see that. 60. 62. Not mega old, but old enough. 1962 that penny was, guys. So I'm happy with that. Oh. Don't take it out on me! Alison's attacking me because Marie's had the sign out. <laughs> a shootout needs two eyes, geezer. And I can't do a shootout now because I'll be doing this. <laughs> Sorry, bro. I didn't mean to. Mm, oh, no, you didn't mean to. <laughs> Big D cell battery, Duracell. And this little thing, it's quite heavy, full of crud, needs a good tap out. Mike's just found a gold earring, it's not gold, it's magnetic, but it's a rrr, pirate one there. That's a shame that ain't gold. And I've just found a little padlock. Just a new one, it's not an old one, so. We pulled that up, we thought it was a. We thought it was a Popeye pipe, but it is actually a spout off a teapot, but it's come up metal. Got some ideas for that. Got a little Ikea knife, it's brand new. Nice little knife. Look at that, it's a beautiful pot. Very nice, very nice. I pulled up this, I haven't got a clue what it is yet. It's quite heavy. We'll have a look in a minute. So, that one just pulled off. Looks like a bit of a concrete breaker. I can go. Look at that, I've got a lovely little lap pin. That's beautiful. Doorknob. <laughs> An old 70s, 60s, 70s bike pedal there, look. Still got the reflectors in. We've moved on, we've came back down to another part of Oxford. We've really done well in the past with. So uh, I'm down, right down there, um, we've bumped into Trevor and um, Claire from Time Magnificent. Aaron's down there with IJ. So get them all on the camera later, hopefully. But along here is brilliant, we've got to keep trying. First row at this spot, half a cow tanga. Oh, that's nice, I've got a little log nail. I think this might be a, an old fruit knife under all that crud. You can just see there, looks like a tiny little angular, but I think it might just be a, a loop that's attached to the knife. We'll have to clean it up and see. It looks like that's one of those taps. You can see that because we're all under the tree, so yeah. And a cut off piece of pipe, and a drain pipe. It's, it's like the tiniest fence pin I've ever seen. <laughs> so I've had me the oldie worldy windless. Or lock key, depends on where you are in the country. I'm going to give it to that bar just there. I'm going to give it to him because we've just been speaking to him. Not quite sure what's in that crowd, so I'm going to give that a tap off. 
just a bit of old boy. You want me to pull forward? And that looks like it's off an old padlock, I think, but we'll have to give it a clean, not quite sure. Well, we've just seen Claire down by the river and she's just come and showed us out and said to shout to the camera to all you lovely people. She know you like to see your history. And that is a pig sticker bayonet. Um, that's what they call them, pig sticker. And it's actually off a Lee Enfield. So, yeah, poor wall. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Another piece of Victorian pipe. Probably off the factory there. Well, we think it's an old electrical contactor switch there. Hi guys, I'm having a very good day today. But I've gone and done it and got the peaky spoon. I just love a peaky spoon. And a no phone. It's a nice pair of brass there. Look, I think it's a hub out of an old, either an old pram or um, or out of a push pipe. But I think it's out of a little old pram. I think I don't know. So I just just had a lovely little sad iron, really good condition, and like a little pit pony shoe. I've got part of an old spoon. <laughs> Spanner and a mooring ring. It had like yeah. Yeah, it definitely looks like a what looks like a butterfly knife, and then Harry's got a scaffold shoe. <laughs> a piece of old horseshoe there, look. So just how things are coming to let this bit of water here and. Uh, just can't find an old one today. Crap, mate. Eh? Oh, that's all I've had is a spanner. That's my best find today so far. Is it a military one? It could be. That's why I've kept hold of it. Because yeah. they crossed this water, didn't they? Yeah. Well, yeah, just a spanner. It's not even a 10 mil. <laughs> an old boat fender. Well, I've got some handlebars from a bike. Would have been an ugly little net. <laughs> the net's gone. And cigarette case. A salt! <laughs> a little handle. Off a little pot or something. That would have been lovely. Has it? And you seen, I found the spoon earlier, the end to a very old spoon. Now I've got the handle. Oh, Glenn, look at that. But as I said earlier, there was my spoon end, which I kept. <laughs> but yeah, look, that would have been a very old one. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's been funny, feel the weight of it. <laughs> <laughs> He's been waiting around for this for quite a while. <laughs> That's nice, got no numbers on it, that was it. Well, you'll find out when you've cleaned it up. <laughs> uh, I've just pulled out a rowel off a spur. That's an old one as well because it's multi pointed. So that'll come back for a clean up. Very sludgy, but lovely old horseshoe there. I shall be keeping that one. Give it a nice clean up. The mid 16th century marked the introduction of the Keol horseshoe. This horseshoe featured a distinct keyhole shape, with a widened area at the heel, providing extra durability and support for the horse. These early 16th century keyhole horseshoes, like the one Kirsty has found, had four nail holes on each side. By the 1700s, they featured up to 10 nail holes, and by the end of the 18th century, keyhole horseshoes had 20 nail holes in total. These horseshoes were used across Europe, accompanying traders, farmers and soldiers on their journeys. And their design reflects a time when the horse was an indispensable part of daily life. First of all, a nice big bunch of very old geese. 
That's cool, isn't it? Yeah, especially when you collect stuff like that as well. It's just it's a bonus, isn't it? Mm. That one looks quite unusual as well. It does, it's got a different cut on it, isn't it? So there we go, literally we've moved down about 100 yards and um, first row in. We'll have a nice bunch of old keys there, so they'll go into our collection. Probably one, two, three, about four or five keys on there, guys. Right, so another amazing day. We've had all of our friends with us. We've got um, Michael, Kirsty, Stephen Allison have gone. Uh, we've met up with Trevor I'm from Time Magnificent. Oh, I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> we met up with Trevor from Time Magnificent and Claire Voss. Lovely to see Claire again and Trevor. Uh, we've seen Aaron, AJ, Harry, Harry, sorry, not Harry, and, um, and Jabba. And Jabba came as well. Yeah. Big surprise, we didn't know he was coming until he pulled up. So, a big shout out to all them guys, they're lovely people. Marie's had possibly the find of the day today. I've not matched up to it. Um, I'm happy with the little bits I've had, but Marie's done it for me and Marie anyway. Yeah, but Kirsty's is older. And Kirsty's had a lovely little find as well, as you've seen with the uh, boot iron. That's 1750s, all day long. Yeah, yeah. So, a lovely little piece it's to hang up on the wall. You haven't seen it yet. <gasps> Oh, but I won't get to put it on the phones. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> like, subscribe, guys, if you haven't already. Hit the bell so you get a notification 10 minutes after it goes out. And big love. Bye all. Thanks for joining, everyone. The Finds Roundup. Hello everybody and welcome to another Peaky Dippers History Hunters. And uh, we went to Oxford again. We're going to Oxford quite a lot at the moment because, well, what's the point going somewhere else? We're getting finding stuff. And uh, what an amazing find we had, which I'll show you in a minute. But we had some little bits and bobs, which I'm going to show you. And uh, yeah, it was quite a good week really. We were joined by the one and only Aaron Smith, the crane. And uh, AJ and Harry came along as well. Uh, so yeah, um, we went to two locations in Oxford. Met up with Trevor Penny, Time Man Division, and Claire Voss. So I should show you a couple of gifts that I was given by uh, Claire. Actually, this one's the one of Claire. So we've got, she knows I like my buckles. This is a beautiful buckle. I've got a piece of paper towel so people can see it properly. So I've got a lovely buckle. It's not mega old, but even still, it's still a nice buckle. It's probably touching 70 years old, probably 60 years old. It's not mega old, but again, Claire knows where I love them. So thank you, Claire. Big shout out to Claire Voss from Time Magnificent. And I'll get the other gift done. This was also of Claire Voss. And it is a big key. Look at that. Well, medium sized key. She knows we clicked our keys, so thank you Claire, again for that. So that's them two things done. I then proceeded to fish off the bridge and I pulled up a bunch of keys, which I managed to get off the ring. It was awkward, but I've managed to do it. And I've managed to clean them up as well. I have got a favourite one, which I'll show you last. So there's one of the keys. I've got this piece of paper behind guys because you can see the cuts in the keys at the bottom then a lot more easier. So that's a small key. We've got another small key but if you look close at that you've got like the cutting rings around the top which I really love. Very decorative. There we go. Then we've got a tall key. That's a little beauty, that one. All on the same bunch, it was, guys. All on the same bunch. Then we got another little, little cupboard key or something like that, that is. Or a little money box key from back in the day. But this is my favourite because look, at, I mean, it's missing the top, but look at the cuts in that key. Look at the cuts. 
beautiful, so intricate. So that's that. That's my bunch of keys. Then I pulled up a piece of metal, and on the metal wasn't necessarily crud, but there was uh, like a very sloppy mud on the back. But what had happened was, as I bought that piece of metal sheeting up, there was a coin on the back, and it literally came off in my finger, so I didn't have to work hard to get it. And it cleaned up quite easy. And it is a 1962 one penny, so it's pre decimal penny. Not mega mega old, but nevertheless it's still a nice coin. Not worth nothing. Then, I don't know if you can see this. I've cleaned up as much as I can, but Marie found the bottom of a bullet. We reckon going by that width there, that's probably a 50 cal. Um, but yeah, um, that would just go in the bin, it's nothing we keep. But I was trying to get the stamping off it to see what year it was. But it would be, as a guess, it probably would be World War II. AJ gave me a little, uh, it was caked in crud, to be honest with you. And I've tapped it all off. We thought it might have been a button, but I've cleaned it up as much as I can. And it's just a metal disc. I can't see any detail on it as yet. I've got a bit more cleaning to do. If it is anything superb, and then I will be sure to put photos out there. But it's got a little dimple in the middle there, look, which makes me think it was a button. But I've still got some cleaning to do that. It's probably about a mil and a half, two mil thick. So, yeah, don't know about that yet. We also had. Um, A scent, so that's a euro scent that is guys, um, not worth nothing, probably half a pence in British money, but yeah, little euro scent. You found this, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm really found this, beautiful. Um, this would have been slightly longer, but Marie's managed to find this white glass. I think it's 1920s, I think. It's 1920s. Happen, or uh, is it happen? Happen, yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's a uh, proper 1920s. You can imagine the ladies with this in the hats. Lovely little find that. And um, let's face it, if that metal had completely gone, we'd never have pulled that piece up because it's class. So that's nice, nice bit of history. Um, I'm just looking on the. Sink, and I've realised I forgot to put a few ones on the table. So I'm really going to pass them to me. They're nothing brilliant, but we'll show them. It just shows what we found on the video, guys. And there's my cup that's already four years old. Uh, right, hang on, right. Down off that bridge, Kirsty and Michael managed to find um, a few pieces of enamel. So they had an enamel teapot, an enamel saucepan. Um, thank you, Marie, my lovely You're assistant. I did forget them, genuinely. <laughs> and there's one on the window edge as well, Marie. Nice. Uh, yes, so um, I only managed to find one piece of enamel. <laughs> and it's that. It's a, it's a spout of a teapot, guys. But Kirsty came up with an amazing idea because I like making sculptures and that. If you turn that around, you can actually make that into an elephant's trunk if I do start doing a little bit of welding work eventually. So, yeah, that was a little bit of a, an idea. Good on you, Kirsty. Marie managed to find a spoon, so we did have a peaky spoon that day, guys, but it wasn't a nice shiny one. It was this one. Now, that is quite old. I'd say probably Victorian. It's not got the right shape for it to be any older than that. I mean, I might be wrong, but um, I'll do a bit more clean up on that and see if there's any lettering on the on the spoon anywhere, but I doubt there will be. I'll probably find it's just an old iron spoon. But, that's it. I've got to give it Marie. Oh, hang on, I've got a toy car. Oh, I've asked Marie to get the bits and I forgot about them. I, pe I pulled out um, a little toy car, little vintage toy car there, look, guys. Too far gone, unfortunately. I'd love to find one of these where I could put the wheels on and make it all nice again, but uh, the last time I found a toy car was in Chertsey, and it was a Tonka toy car. 
Mm. And I managed to redo that one up. And a hobnail boot, iron, which dates up roughly the area we was finding a few things from. So there you go. Nothing amazing. But Maria, find of the day. And Kirsty had some beautiful finds. She had the shoe pattern or yes, shoe iron. Yes, Kirsty had the 1750s shoe pattern or shoe iron. And the Keola shoe. And the Keola, oh, I love that. I love that, I've got to admit. I have got quite a few war shoes and I've managed to find a medieval one myself. But Kirsty's or shoe, uh, if she don't want it, I mean like... Uh, I really love you, Kirsten. <laughs> but he is called um, a Keyhole Horseshoe. I believe Marie's put a photo on the video. And it is 15, probably 16th century, 17th century. It is the oldest horseshoe I've seen come up in Madden Fishing, to be honest. It would look lovely next to all my medieval stuff, Kirsty. <laughs> um, <laughs> and perhaps you can have uh, the elephants. Trunk, I don't know, but uh, yeah, it's a lovely horseshoe, Kirsty. Beautiful. Now I really do like it, and it's gorgeous. So that was a super find by Kirsty. But I've got to say, my wife's done amazing. Thank okay. you. Marie done amazing because Marie only went and pulled out this guy's, as you see. Him. So we've got a Morning Post, one D. So that's one pence back in the day. And that is pre-1937, so this does not come after 1937, so 1937, 1939, so this would be, eight, if it was 1937, this would be 85, 86 years old, it could even be older, so this is pre-1937. And we can't find another one. No, we have looked at it, we've researched it, we've found the Morning Post which was a London newspaper back in the day, but we can't find this sign anywhere. So, um, it is, as we call it so far, a one-off. And guess who you're giving this one-off to, Mara? Steve. Steve. So, Rusty's having this. I have protected it all on the back. We've got pr a proper rust chemical that preserves everything. Of um, You only ever put furniture polish on the front of a normal sign guys don't put nothing else and just a not a scare just a sponge just to clean it up steve does collect signs like that doesn't he steve does collect so, so, yeah, so, 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 so signs t -t 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 signs <laughs> uh steve does collect signs so uh, marie's decided that this one is going to go to uh steve we've got a few signs that we're already happy with so you know share and share the love is what we believe uh, but Marie's had the thrill of pulling it up. So, yeah, nice little sort of sign. And as I say, or I will repeat myself, a one off. Because if anybody can send me a photo of this, then they've done a better job than us. Yep. And we've had a week of researching. So that's that, guys. Now, quickly, before I do go, and I talk you all to death, my little brother, who's not very little, he's probably three, three foot taller than me, which isn't hard. Um, has just bought out uh, a new Facebook group, uh, Stroke will be a website eventually, and what he's doing is he's doing decals and stickers for cars, the backs of your mobile phones, um, anything really, whether you're into metal detecting, whether it's your logo, YouTube stickers, anything like that, I'll get Marie just to put the name of it just up here. It's my little brother named Mike, Michael, and uh, if you get in touch with him, if you want anything, he can go up to a foot per letter. So if you had a van or a boat or a trailer that you want some decals doing for, then he can go up to 12 inches square per letter or per design. So get in touch with him, guys. He's yeah. a lovely bloke, just like his brother. And... Um, He's on he'll, Facebook and TikTok. He's on Facebook and TikTok and up there where you've seen that name there, it's called Label It and uh, it's Michael. Uh, get in touch with him and he'll sort you out. So there you go. And I should imagine because it's only stickers and that, he will do worldwide. So there you go, I'm pushing that one out. 
and he'll probably tell me off, but I think he will do worldwide. So please go on across and have a look at my little brother, get him started guys, he really enjoys doing it. I've had two stickers done for myself, which I can't show you at the moment, but when they do come, I'm going to put one on the back of my phone, one on the back of Marie's phone, and we'll show you what they'll look like. So there you go guys, that's it, I shall love and leave you all, have a blessed good evening. Um, we shall be going live at 3pm uh, British time on Sunday. I do apologise if we do go over time sometimes, but we get carried away and sometimes we look at our watches and it's gone past, way past the time we're under the live. So I do apologise on my side guys. Please don't subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and big love to each and every one of you guys that are watching us tonight. Mm -hmm.